Hello, my name is uh, Omid Kemani and I am an ophthalmologist practicing in Cologne in Germany. The video demonstrates cases that I have addressed with a novel custom-made anterior chamber lens. A 24-year-old woman had surgery for a unilateral congenital cataract at age 1, resulting in an aphakia. She has worn an aphakia contact lens since childhood. Her visual acuity is best corrected 2025 in the aphakic right eye and 2020 in the left eye, with an endothelial cell count of 2900 in the aphakic eye. Posterior synechia between her pupil margin and capsular back remnants prevent access to the ciliary sulcus for scleral fixated IOL. Limited options exist in treating aphakia. The FDA-approved Kalman Multiflex anterior chamber lens from 1980 is still remaining the primary IOL. While concerns exist about anterior chamber lenses, off-label alternatives like the retroiridial fixed varicized lens have emerged. Various transcleral fixation methods for PCL and the sulcus have also been developed. Despite these options, none were convincing, so I recommended the patient return in a year while I began exploring solutions. Olaf Morcher, CEO of Morcher Company in Germany, a company with 70 years of eye surgery expertise, approved the proposal that I made. The new anterior chamber lens is uh, made of proven hydrophilic acrylate, measures 12 to 40 mm in overall diameter based on the patient's white to white measurement and features a 5 mm spherical optic. It has three haptics arranged symmetrically as a tristalion angle to ensure smooth aqueous humor flow without requiring iridectomy. In the following I will show you the implantation of the Morsha Type 37F anterior chamber lens. The procedure is done under topical anesthesia with a constricted pupil. The anterior chamber is prepped with Wiscode as an OVD and the plus 16 diopter ACIOL is inserted through a 2.5 mm perilimbal incision. Correct insertion is confirmed by the clockwise orientation of the spiral shaped haptics to prevent pupillary block. After bimanual OVD aspiration, the IOL is adjusted and the incisions are sealed to complete the procedure which lasts just two minutes. Post-surgery, a week-long course of combined steroid antibiotic eye drops is recommended. The post-operative recovery proceeded without any complications. I'm presenting the endothelial images taken before the operation, 6 and 12 months later. It's evident that the new IOL is well tolerated. Uncorrected visual acuity had significantly improved and the patient did not lose lines in best corrected visual acuity. The IOP remained normal and there were no signs of inflammation. I have mainly used the new ACIOL for elderly patients experiencing late IOL in the back dislocation, a growing concern. While it's possible to refix or replace the dislocated lens, these procedures are technically challenging and time-consuming. Moreover, there is a risk of surgical trauma and post-operative complications. Therefore, when considering safety, the short expected wearing time of an ACIOL in this patient group is a key factor. Ultimately, if needed, the ACIOL can be easily replaced. In an emergency case, the new ACIOL served as a rescue lens when the heart lens nucleus collapsed during phaco emulsification, preventing the insertion of a PCL. The patient in a poor general health and on anticoagulation therapy presented a high risk profile. To avoid prolonged surgery on such a patient, a week after the incomplete cataract surgery, a pasplana vitrectomy with endophaco and an ACIOL implantation was performed. The surgery performed under topical anesthesia offers patient comfort. The hydrophilic acrylate ACIOL implants are customized for size fitting and aim to be astigmatism neutral at 2.5 mm perilimbal incision. This 
atraumatic procedure does not require iridectomy. Patients recover quickly post-surgery with monitoring through slit lamp examination and endothelial cell count measurements. Thank you for your interest and I invite you to contribute to the ongoing development and establishment of this promising new IOL.